Good afternoon, good morning or good evening everyone. Welcome to the Junior School Prep 2021 information session. We'd love to be doing this with you all in the multi-purpose room, which is where we normally do it. But unfortunately, as we know this year, things are a little bit different. On my right, we have Mrs. Marcel Gerrish. Hello. And on my left is Mrs. Tali Silva. Hi. And they are our Prep 2021 teachers and they were our Prep 2020 teachers as well. So we're going to take you through the information session right now. And we're going to, in a second, move to the PowerPoint. So you will see the PowerPoint on screen rather than our, our noggins, um, which will be absolutely fine because it'll be better to look at the PowerPoint than us, I reckon. But anyway, um, before we do that, I'm gonna bring over Mrs. Kathy Carden. Hello. Okay, this is well scripted. This isn't it, guys. You're <laughs> absolutely enjoying the, this to the max. Um, so Kathy is our junior school chaplain. Can you just quickly Kath, give us an idea of what you do in your role at the school? Yeah, so as chaplain of the school, I, I do look after the um, religion side and teach religious and values education, but also very heavily involved in pastoral care, run a few other um, groups that help our little people cope with things in life, socially, emotionally, and in other ways. So definitely looking forward to meeting you all. Good, thank you, Cathy. And before we leave and go to the PowerPoint, Marcel Gerrish also has another role in our school, or actually a double role. So Marcel, can you give a quick explanation to parents about your role as year level coordinator? I am the prep to year two um, year level coordinator and that's where I look after the pastoral side of the prep to the twos and I also work with the teachers in caring for our little people um, and all their things that they need caring with. I am also Hotham Head of House, which is across the school from P to 12. All your children have been allocated a house and it's a great thing to be involved in here at Cathedral College. At the moment, um, just after we finish our video, all the children in the junior school will be listening to the Year 5 children with their house captain speeches and uh, then they'll be voting. So it's a, it's a, it's a full-on process and now we look forward to houses are very, being a very important part of what our school offers partially but also through all our sporting events which are all house-based. Anyway, and don't, not forgetting house music of course. House music indeed. All right, so um, we look forward to uh, catching up with you and uh, seeing you. Hopefully we'll have a chance again before the end of the, end of the year. But uh, until then, we're going to go on to the PowerPoint and give you a lot of information. If this information will also be able to be delivered to you via a, um, a PrEP 2021 handbook. Okay, so um, enjoy what you see in the next 10 or so minutes. Thank you. Okay, so again, welcome everybody. You're back now to our PowerPoint. Hopefully you can see some of our gorgeous year five children from last year with the preps from last year and that's part of the buddy program that we will talk to you about later on. So the information session is I will share some information with you in regard to the junior school and then Marcel and Tali will also share information that's more specific to the entry of school and their first year and even right down to their very first day and their very first week. Okay, so I'll hand over to Marcel now who's going to talk about the things that your child is going to learn in prep. When your child comes to school for prep, they are going to learn so many things, both socially, emotionally, and academically. So this is just a little snapshot of some of the things they will learn. Um, so you can just read down and have a look at all those amazing things that your child will learn in their first year at school. In terms of communication, it's really vital that we communicate well between home and school so that we are all on the same page. We try to provide lots of information to families. We have a weekly prep newsletter and we make sure that it has information that's relevant to each class. We will email that prep newsletter home. However, if you would like to receive it in hard copy, you can let Marcel or myself know and that will be available each Monday. Uh, the school diary is our main form of communication. Uh, if your child is on a bus or being picked up by someone different or any details that your child's teacher need to know, needs to know, if you could pop that in the diary, that would be great. And we ask that parents check the diary each day as well. And obviously our school newsletter will provide broader school information. Thank you, Tali. But just go back to um, this slide for a second. One of the things that uh, uh, was I noticed when we came to school here is, and, and one of the prep teachers, it might have been Marcel actually, used the word that prep is all about learning how to learn. 
and some children will come with a range of different milestones that they'll have achieved, um, and there'll be some that will still be to um, achieve those milestones. So that's a good phrase to remember is learning how to learn. And part of that, as Tali mentioned there, is about communication. So the diary becomes really important as well for the children to bring their diary in and, and have a set spot where it goes for the teachers. And that's about that sense of independence that we've seen the children gather this year while they've been at their kinders, but also when they came for the Step and Prep program. The next part of it is just some of the formalised stuff that happens at school. If you've never had a child at school, and this is your first child who's coming to a school, you'll receive um, a reporting of parents program that we, we follow. And that happens in two ways. There are formal parent-teach interviews that are held in first term and third term. The first term interview is held round about the start of March um, and is a good chance to discuss and share how your child has settled in. Um, the growth that's already occurred with the child and also the development that will occur and the strategies the teacher will use. Um, it's a really good opportunity just to also build that rapport between the parents and in some cases maybe the first that we have face-to-face -face contact. An interview schedule is, um, is sent out and you're asked to book in online. That'll all be handled for you. You'll get good instructions in regard to that. So that's term one and term three. And the term three uh, parent inter teacher interview is very much related to the report, which is the semester one report. Now you will see on the second dot point there that there are two school reports. One is sent home at the end of term two for semester one and then the term four. So if you think about it like this, um, those reports are very much about children learning how to learn and get and learning to be independent and organize themselves. And there'll be a range of different skills that children have achieved. Um, but at that stage, uh, that's certainly information that uh, you'll already be very much aware of because you'll have lots of communications with your teachers. The open door policy is an interesting policy for us this year because uh, it was very open door in term one. One thing that we would really like to for you to consider next year, as difficult as it might be because you just want to rush into the classroom, we've seen some extraordinary development in children, not just at, at school, but also in kindergartens, with children taking responsibility to come into the classroom themselves, be dropped off at the gate and come in, etc. We'd like that to continue in a lot of in ways next year without being overly formal because it has developed our children incredibly and much more than we ever thought it would possibly do. At the end of the school day, very happy for parents to come onto the premises and to um, come and see what's going on in the classrooms and be part of everything that's happening. Uh, but that school morning, the very, the, at the start of the day, if you could um, really encourage your child to carry their own bag in, um, say good day to the teachers as they're walking in, have a chat to the teachers um, at the gate uh, where we are, will be, and uh, watch your child proudly and independently walk to their room and get themselves organised for the start of the day. It's a, um, it's a great thing to witness. Term one is going to be a little bit different next year, and I'll get Marcel to talk about that in a second, but you'll see that we're actually starting term one on Monday, February the 1st. Now, the whole school will be starting on Thursday, the 28th of January. What's happening on Thursday, January 28th, Friday, January 29th, and Wednesday, February 3rd, remember the children don't come to school throughout February on a Wednesday, are those days the children will all be allocated in a time slot for a short interview, which I'll get Marcel to talk about in a second, a short interview. So a third of the class on Thursday, a third on Friday, and a third on Wednesday. So your children don't need to come to school on Thursday, Friday, Wednesday, unless that is their allocated day. Monday, the February the 1st, is the first full day for prep to come to school next year. Okay, Monday the 1st of February is the first full day for prep to come to school next year. And the uh, Thursday, Friday and Wednesday will be uh, days allocated for some short little interviews. Please note there you will also see that uh, we are only not having school on a Wednesday, so they have that rest and refreshment day on February 3rd, 10, 17 and 24th. And the first full day or full week of school for the children perhaps will be Monday, March 1st. Marcel, would you be able to just share a brief explanation of what would happen at the short interview? So what we do in our interview, it, we allocate the children an hour each and Tali and myself work one-on-one -on -one with the child from our class and we look at their numeracy skills, their literacy skills, their conversation skills, and we just get a snapshot of what they're bringing to school, what learning they're bringing to school. And it's also very exciting that they get to start on their very own special day. So it's a, it will just be a whole prep celebration for them. So the interview is just a short, informal 
meeting with their teacher and it also allows us to build that rapport with your child one-on-one -on -one, and it just gives us a snapshot of what learning they're bringing to school. Thank you, Marcel. And you'll, you'll understand that the Thursday, the Friday and the Wednesday, to get through all those, and the hour is sort of can be up to an hour, is going to be quite full days for the, for the students and the teachers um, that come in. So if there's any that flowed over that weren't able to be done on Thursday, Friday, Wednesday, we'd find another time during the first week or so at school to ensure that all children are, are assessed. One of the things about that is that we now have all the testing or the short interview done and where the children are at by the end of the first week, whereas previously it hasn't been until the end of the first week or second week of March. So this is a, this is a great advantage for our children this year and um, we'll be looking forward to getting your feedback at the end of it. We, okay. also, oh, sorry. we also do stress that on the rest days that the children rest um, because we find and you will also find that two days of school is exhausting and they will be very tired and it's also summer so they'll be hot but they are learning so much. They're learning new routines, new expectations. There's just so much to learn. So please, on those rest days, maybe try not to schedule play dates or other things but just let your child have a rest at home because that will really help them go through the rest of the week on Thursday and Friday. Thank you, Marcel. What can you do to help your child prepare for school? Mrs. Hill, would you like to take us through a couple of those key dot points that you think are important? So you've all been involved in your children's learning from the time that they were babies and you still have a huge role to play in their day-to-day -day learning. Uh, the big things that are wonderful to work on with your children are the things that help them to be more independent. So practicing putting on and taking off their school jumpers, opening and closing zips, making sure that they can open their lunch boxes and any containers that may be inside, um, opening their drink bottles, uh, the twist top yogurts, if those are something that you send in your child's lunch box, those are really tricky to open. So a bit of practice at home is terrific. Um, and obviously, Having been at kinder, your children will have already begun to learn to recognise their own name and perhaps even write it. We really encourage teaching your children that their name begins with a capital letter and all of the other letters in their name are lowercase. Uh, share books with your children. It's super important. Greg's a, um, always a huge advocate of reading right across the school. Uh, model to your child holding the book correctly, turning the pages from the corner, using their snappy fingers. Uh, those are all things that we will be reinforcing at school once they're here. Uh, so uh, other fine motor activities that you can work on at home are cutting things out. Uh, using scissors is a real challenge for some children. They can help peg the washing or pick up food with tongs to develop the muscles in their hands that they will need for writing. Thank you, Tali. And, and I know I've met all of you and your children have done some work in that developmental questionnaire with me. And, and one of the things that we saw that was really strong with children is to develop a strong core so they can sit up nice and straight, like that little young fella down there at the moment, sitting up nice and straight um, and ready to be in a good posture and good strength to, to do his writing. Because actually the whole writing process for children, uh, especially with concentration, uh, is quite a tiring aspect. Now, I'm gonna get Marcel to take us through the day and what a day would look like, including what happens at the end of the day when the children are getting ready to go home. So our school day begins, the first bell goes at 8.55, but you are more than welcome to drop your child off at the gate any time between 8.30 and 8.55. The kids usually just have a play, meet with their friends and get organised for the day before that first bell goes. Then our go home bell is 3.10. We have children who go to after school care, we have children who catch buses and we have children who go home in home line. The children who go to after school care or OSH as we like to call it, they are sent to OSH in a group and they wait for Donna, who is the um, OSH coordinator. If your child is a bus traveller, in Term 1, we have a walking bus that is in the um, Prep Year 1 building. 
all the children who catch the bus in prep and year one gather together and then they walk over to their bus teachers. And then the children who are going home in home line, they walk out with their teachers and that's when they can meet their mums and dads in the playground after school. Um, and that's how our day looks. And we have recess. So in term one, the preps go out for recess a bit earlier than everybody else because they need that time to eat so that then they've got time for play. And the same is for lunch. The preps get a longer, a little bit longer to um, eat their lunch than everybody else. But as the year goes on and they get quicker at eating, um, we bring the time back a little bit. So they usually get 10 to 15 minutes to eat their lunch. So then they've got plenty of time to play. Sometimes your child will be sick. So if they are sick, or they're away for any other reason, please can you ring the school and let them know. And that helps us um, just know where your little person is during the day. Thank you. The buddies now, it's, it's quite, um, quite uh, timely that we have the buddies on the screen now because Tali Silver was a year five teacher in 2019 and actually can talk to us quickly about the perspective from the year fives. And of course, Marcel knows about the buddies from a prep year. So Charlie, can you explain the year fives and the buddy role that they play? So the buddy program is a wonderful initiative for both our grade fives and our prep students. They form a really strong relationship throughout the year. They, the year fives organise activities for their buddies. They come across to the prep classroom. They support their prep buddies in taking them to chapel and assembly and house. Um, early in the year when the preps are not so sure where to go. Uh, it gives the year fives a sense of responsibility and a role in caring for a younger student. And it's amazing to see how those buddy relationships continue all throughout the children's schooling. Um, the preps absolutely love and adore their year five buddies. So in term one, we spend once a fortnight with our buddies and we often have a buddy lunch just so the preps can build up that relationship with their special friend who is in year five. We try and allocate your child's buddy from the same house and that we usually get that 95% right. Just sometimes there's more preps or more year fives and so your child might have two year five buddies or a year five might have two prep buddies. Anyway, the preps love their year five buddies and it's a beautiful program and um, we're very proud of it here at Cathedral College. Thank you. Healthy eating is a really important part. I might do this a little bit because mm, I teach wellbeing across the entire school. Otherwise, I get stuck behind my desk and that's not why I joined up to be a teacher. So, um, and part of that, we look at healthy eating habits and we also look at wellbeing of a child, learning about themselves, but also learning about other people and reading personalities, etc., etc. But the healthy eating is really important. So, obviously, encouraging healthy eating habits is, is critical that provides your child with the nutritious food to get through the, the day at school. Very important, the start of the school. I know we all probably can remember our parents telling us breakfast is the most important meal. Well, there's no doubt about that it is. And, it, and we set the curriculum up to actually um, use the time in the morning when the children are at their optimal best to be learning those key fundamentals around literacy and numeracy. So heating healthily is really important. So please make sure you a good breakfast. The other thing is, um, obviously, we um, we prefer people not to send nuts or products to school with traces of nuts because we have many children who are allerg allergic or also have anaphylaxis. So please be, just like in society, please be really conscious of that sort of thing. And if you do send anything in, um, any, say for a birthday cake, something like that, please put all the ingredients written in there and please be aware, talk to your teachers about children who may not be able to have those sorts of foods. So that's a really important part. The other thing is water is our drink of choice. Okay, because it obviously provides that sense of um, hydration for children and your children tend to get really busy and so they go long periods of time at lunchtime without having something to drink. So make sure that there's water there we can continue, they can sip on during the day to ensure they're hydrated throughout the day. One thing we do suggest to you is that your child is only at school for six hours. They do not need lunch that is packed as if they're going away for a week. So they only need a small fruit snack. We find with beginning preps that if they're given a whole apple or a whole orange, it's really difficult for them to eat. So maybe if you could cut it up for them, they find that easier to eat. Recess can just be something as simple as cheese and biscuits or a homemade cake 
or fruit, fruit, more fruit, yes. veggie sticks and some dip or whatever else they like. Um, we really try and cut down on the packaged food here at school just because of the rubbish. So plastic containers, we love the nude food moment, movement. So if you want to pack barbecue shapes and other exciting things that come in packets, you might like to put them into a little container. The same with your lunch. We find the kids just want to play. They want to play with their new friends. They want to explore their new surroundings. So we find less is best. But you know your child. You know how much they eat. But please don't be alarmed if they come home with half a sandwich or they haven't eaten everything that you've packed. It's just that they want to play instead of sitting down and eating. We actually have some families in our school that set Sunday afternoon or Sunday evening apart at home to do baking for muffins or something like that they will bring to school and their child then brings that to school on each of the days of the week. So that's something to consider too. It's a nice little activity to do at home, which is very, um, very friendly, but also very family related. The first day of school has arrived um, and I might just run through this mm. for you at the moment. Uh, first day of school, so please make sure everything's ready to go. Lay out the school uniform the night before. Um, if your child knows where their lunchbox is, drink bottle, hat, school supplies, etc. Also leave plenty of time to avoid rushing. Um, first day, first week of school, remember Monday, February the 1st, will be quite a busy time in the playground, in the, sorry, in the car park. So um, leave plenty of time to avoid rushing and we do have a, a kiss and drop zone. Uh, plus you can also park and walk your child across to the front gate. Uh, you're welcome to stay a little while there and have maybe have a chat to your teacher and you'll see your child come through They'll, um, they'll be very secure when they're coming into school and, and have a real sense of, of belonging straight away. Um, if your child does get a little bit upset, actually probably more if the parents get a little bit upset to miss <laughs> their child, um, then just reassure, reassure your child, you'll see them at the end of the day. If there was an issue, etc., let me um, please assure you that every child, as soon as a parent leaves, any tears that they have got are absolutely then evaporate and they're gone completely. So um, they still love you and you still love them and they know they'll see you at the end of the day. Um, and plus, obviously, our teachers, if there's any issue that does occur that you think is quite a major issue, please contact our, our teachers um, and we will support your child throughout the day. And we'll ring you too, just so you know that your little brother is okay. Uh, a little bit of additional information, Marcel, just quickly about labels yes, and independence. Yes, we absolutely... Um, ask you to label everything that your child brings to school, be it their hat, their uniform, library bag, lunchbox, drink bottle, because there'll be 25 of everything the same. So we please ask you to label everything. We are really big on the children developing independence. Please, please, please let them carry their own school bag. They might look big, they might look heavy, but rest assured your child can carry their own bag and it's they own it, that is their special bag, and we really ask you to let them do that. Also birthdays, we love birthdays here at school. If you would like to send in something for your child to share with their classmates, we recommend Freddo Frogs or Chupa Chups. Um, cakes can be an issue with dietary requirements, but again, that's up to you. It doesn't have to be food. Some parents have sent in a pencil or a balloon. Um, but there's no obligation to send anything in, but we do celebrate them as a class and it's all very, very exciting. And we have, there are some people in our school who have, a lot, who have had a lot more birthdays than others, but we all love celebrating birthdays. <laughs> That's all for today. Um, thank you for your attendance, even though it's been virtually. Um, if sure, please, if there are any questions that come, we normally have a question and answer session right now. But if you have any questions or concerns or you would like some information clarified, please do not hesitate to contact myself or Marcel Gerrish or Tali Silver or, or Kathy Carden in our junior school chaplain and counsellor. That's a really important thing. You can send information to us by email or just um, give us a ring on the phone and we'll get back to you and help you out with any details. We'll be in touch later on with um, out that information about um, if anything else can happen with Step Into Prep. But until then, may you have a wonderful rest of this year. You will receive a calendar about for January. It allows you to do little activities on each day of the week and tick the tick the box. As I said to some parents, please don't say to your child that Christmas is they go to school after Christmas or otherwise Boxing Day. They'll wake up fully dressed in their school clothes, ready to go.
That's why we give you the calendar so they can tick off the days until the first day of school. Until then, may you have a wonderful rest of the year and I'm sure we'll catch up with you and enjoy your last few weeks at kindergarten. Bye for now.